That is a failed attempt at the intro to marching out by the original neoclassical shredder Yngwie Malmsteen. It took me a good while to learn it, especially because I was only playing guitar for like a year when I tried. But instead of getting frustrated, I decided way back then to figure out a way to learn parts more efficiently. And boy, does it work. And that's what I'm here to show you today. I've got two secrets that are going to help you learn way more quickly so you don't feel like you're banging your head against the wall. And welcome to Music with Marky. <laughs> So I've been teaching guitar for 30 some years now and there are some things I see just about every student either struggle with or do when trying to learn something that they are struggling with. And what those things are when something really difficult comes up is actually two things that really slow down the process. Why are you trying to play it at full speed already? This secret is the more obvious of the two, but it happens so often that I'm really surprised. When you have a difficult riff or progression or whatever it is, the first thing you want to do it started at half the speed. Yes, half. Now the big secret here is to keep track of the speed increases as you go. So go over to the free metronome on Google, take that lick that you are fighting with, and let's say it's at 120 BPM, and slow it all the way down to like 60 BPM, play it at that speed or even slower if need be, and then keep bringing it up 4 BPM until you are just barely getting it. This could happen over several days or even weeks, depending on how tough it is, and whatever speed it is that that day that you're kind of getting but barely getting, put it on paper or whatever digital note-taking thing you use, and then go work on something else, play something else on the guitar, or go do anything. And when you come back, start at or around the last speed you left off at and see if you can get it a little closer to the actual speed going up those 4 BPM per minute and write that down and so on. Eventually you will get there and even take it up to a good 10 BPM faster so that when you play the part at the correct speed, it's really easy for you to control. This is the one thing I see almost no one do and it's going to help you a ton. You have to isolate the problem spot. This isolation thing is something that every time I show my students, they always go, oh, I should have thought of that. And what you're doing here, well, let me show you. I'm gonna play a scale, show you what I mean. When you play this scale, you have two different things that can happen with your right hand as you switch strings, and one is tougher than the other. So when you start, you start with a downstroke, it's a three note per string scale like I show in a lot of my shredder lessons, and your right hand is going down, up, down. And that means on that third note, I'm picking in the direction of the next string, so it's, if I continue with alternate picking, it's an upstroke on the next string, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now the problem is on the second string, every even numbered string, the last pick before switching strings is going in the wrong direction. So it's up, down. So an exercise I do as I'm building up speed on these scales is to break it into a small piece. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Which is really great and you can practice that and get really fast, but then you're only good at every other part of it. You have to isolate the part that is the more difficult part that you're struggling with, which is when you start with an upstroke. Which just about anyone can't do nearly as fast as when you start with a downstroke. And so this works for any kind of riff. It's about isolating the part that's difficult. Say you take something famous like Crazy Train. The end part of it there where you're switching strings. You might have this part down because the right hand is easy. You know, it's just back and forth, but all of a sudden you're switching with open strings. You might struggle with that part of it, or whatever riff you're working with, chord progression, anything. If you're playing most of it at a certain speed and then one part of it is difficult, take that one part, isolate it, and practice that the same way with the working it up to speed so that the weak part starts to become very comfortable and fits in with everything else. Anyway, it's all about isolating the weakest part of what you're having trouble with. So there you have it. Those are my two methods for learning those difficult passages without as much frustration and getting them much more quickly. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, guys, keep making great music.